Hey, this is Jordan from Jersey, and welcome to a very special outdoors episode for the final full week of the summer, September 16th, 2009, and we're going to get things started off with All Hail Megatron, issue 15. Um, not a great issue. Um, second story, because once again, it's two stories, just like the last one. Second story was better than the first, um, but quite frankly, I'm really falling out of love with this series. I mean, hopefully they just wrap it up soon so I can get the last, like, two issues and call it a day. But uh, if they decide to make this an ongoing, I can't I can't justify picking it up. It's just not good, and it's not sticking to the original story of uh, what if Megatron took over the world. That was a really cool beginning premise to the series, and they kind of dropped it. Next up, we do have a good book, and that's The Amazing Spider-Man number 605. In this issue, it's actually a double-sized issue, by the way, we get three stories, unlike two of the last one. Um, the first one focuses on Mary Jane in Hollywood, what she was doing like six months ago, I believe it was. The next story focuses on Mary Jane back in New York, right about now. And the final story focuses on Peter and his love life. And it really is a classic uh, tale. I really thought it fit in nice with the Spider-Man mythos. Could be set 30 years ago, could be set today. Sweet little story, good stuff. The art and writing were both solid throughout, and I can't wait till next issue when we have the triumphant, hopefully, return of Felicia Hardy, the Black Cat, so stay tuned for that one. And we'll stay in Spider-Man mythos for the next few moments with The Amazing Spider-Man Presents, Anti-Venom, New Ways to Live, issue one of three. And I must say, I'm, I'm quite uh, impressed with the guys over at Marvel. The last three Spider-Man spin-off series... You had uh, the Sinister Spider-Man, which I think ends pretty soon, like next week or two weeks from now. Probably two weeks from now. Uh, Mr. Negative, the Dark Reign spinoff, and now this Anti-Venom one. We're all fairly good. Um, this is probably the weakest of the three. Uh, if you like Venom, you know, old school Venom, pick it up. If you don't, you can skip it, but it's a, it's a solid enough series. The other two were, I'd say, I don't want to say substantially better. They were both, they were both better, though. But uh, this is still worth your time if you like Venom. Next up, we have Dark Avengers number 9. And we are finally done with the eh, crossover of Uncanny X-Men and Dark Avengers. We can finally get back to the, the real meat of Dark Reign. In this issue, we find Ares hunting down uh, Nick Fury and the Secret Warriors. Which is awesome. Here's my slight problems, and I've seen this written other places as well on the internets and mentioned different podcasts, but... Uh, Phobos, Ares' son. He's the main link between the Secret Warriors and Ares. I've been reading Secret Warriors, and granted I know really nothing about any of these Secret Warriors other than what is mentioned in that book. So in Secret Warriors, we've got this kid Phobos. I'd say, based on the book, he's like 13, 14. You know, he's a kid, but he's he's a god, and so he's... You know, he, he's more than just your average kid. You know, snarky, kind of uh, talks back a lot. In this issue, though... Had I read No Secret Warriors, I would have thought that Phobos was a scared six-year-old. Now, part of that could be because, you know, it's being written... The story focuses mainly on Phobos and his dad, and, hey, lots of people, myself included, act differently around our dads than we do our friends. It's just the way things are. But this was a really drastic shift in characterization. Um, if you can get past that, though, it was a good story. Um, Ares was very cool, has a cool motorcycle in this book, you want to check that out. And, uh, yeah, it was a good issue overall, and I can't wait for the next one. And we're going to finish things off today with two zombie-centric books, the first being Marvel Zombies Return, issue three of five. So let's recap. Marvel Zombies Return, issue number one. I loved it. Marvel ish uh, Zombies Return, issue number two. It's not that good at all. But I'm happy to say that Marvel Zombies Return 3 is a definite uh, pickup in the pace. Not quite as good, at least in my opinion, as the first issue, but it's, uh, it's not focusing on Iron Man, so that helps. The art style, it's uh, very muddy. Hopefully you can see in failing light here. But uh, it's very, uh, and, and I say muddy in a good way, it's very, very dark and, and brooding. It fits the, the tone of the story very well. This issue, we pick up... Uh, a while after the first two issues, uh, Zombie Spider-Man is now in the same world as Zombie uh, Wolverine, and he's working on a cure for the the zombie-ness. So he's trying to hunt down non-zombie Wolverine to get a sample of his blood because 
healing factor and all that. He figures he can synthesize an, an uh, anti-venom, if you will. And this issue focuses on him trying to hunt down Wolverine and hijinks ensue. Good issue. Uh, nice change of pace from issue number two. Hopefully it can continue it right on through the end of the series. And we'll finish things off today with Deadpool, Merc with a Mouth, issue three. And not that I even need to point it out to you, but this beautiful, beautiful Dawn of the Dead uh, parody, or not even parody, just homage. Um, I love it. I, I've loved the covers for the series since the beginning, and this one is my favorite so far. Jaws, last issue, that was cool. But come on, Dawn of the Dead. I'm mean, a little on the nose, I'll give you that, but it's a great, great cover. So in general, I like Deadpool Merc with a Mouth. Not as much as Deadpool, the main ongoing series. Um, maybe a little bit more than Cable and Deadpool towards the middle, but Cable and Deadpool had its ups and downs in 50 issues, so that's a whole other story. Um, the series, though, it's, it's showing some real good potential. I was kind of upset at the end of last issue when it looked like uh, Headpool and Deadpool were going to be separated because together they were awesome. Uh, looks like that wasn't really the case. I overreacted, jumped the gun, hindsight 20 is 20, all that kind of stuff. But uh, they're back together in this book. Very cool stuff. Now, one of my favorite things about this issue was the center spread, or not actually the center spread, but it was close. And I apologize. I know the light is failing, but uh, this beautiful two-page spread here with the, uh, with the note, where's Waldo? Uh, I looked for a couple minutes. I didn't find Waldo, if there is one. If you find one, please leave it in the comments, because I'd love to know. You know, just tell me where he is. That's cool. Well, that's awesome. Oh, and uh, what's better than zombies and a T-Rex? I'll let you fill in that blank right there, because there's... I don't even need to tell you. You can figure it out yourself. It's awesome. Overall, it's a good series. It shows potential. I still don't like it quite as much as the main Deadpool book, but hey, it's worth a look. It's a fun arc overall. Very, uh, very focused. And... I love zombies, so you can't really go wrong, unless it's Marvel Zombies Return issue number two, but we'll forget about that. Anyway, see you next week. It'll be fall, but that's what I thought of the comics I read the last week of the summer, September 16th, 2009. And I really want to get back inside, because there's a lot of bugs out here.